my friends, with your aid, we have weathered a brutal assault. Sorry I'm late, though I would not have been had anyone thought to notify me in advance. As I was saying, it was only with your aid that we weathered this assault. Without it, the Crystarium and all who dwell here would now be gone. For each we saved, another perished. If there is anything else we can do to help, anything at all, you need only ask. This is our home too. And we want nothing more than to keep it safe. Thank you. We are blessed to have you with us. As for the attack itself, Vorthree may call it divine retribution, but Sin Eaters are creatures of instinct. A coordinated assault is unprecedented. Moreover, in the absence of a Light Warden, there should have been no compulsion for lesser Sin Eaters to congregate here en masse all of which points to a single, unavoidable conclusion. That these minions of light answer to a higher power. He who did claim kinship with them, who did boast of control, not in idleness, t'would seem, but in earnest. Lord Vorthry. Indeed. What I mistook for bluster was in fact the truth. The Sin Eaters are his to command. But if he imagines this show of force will convince us to bend the knee, he is sorely mistaken. I take it your meeting in Yulmore did not end well. You could say that, yes. But I am wiser for the experience, nevertheless. It appears he has mastered a technique which allows him to enslave the minds of others. A fact I discovered when he attempted to use it on me. that would go some way towards explaining the peculiar reverence afforded him by his subjects. There may feasibly be a handful of true believers among them, I suppose, but it would not surprise me if the vast majority were in his thrall. Had I not anticipated his treachery, I might well have joined them. But seeing his invitation for what it was, I sent a glamour in my stead. I rather doubt such tricks will avail me a second time, however. Did you have any luck tracking down the Light Warden in Calusia? Sadly, I have nothing to report on that front. What of Arm Arang? After a fruitless few days scouring ruins, I resorted to asking the locals. While no one I spoke to had seen any sign of the Warden, I did uncover a possible lead. An abandoned mine in Western Arm Arang. From what the Maud told me, it would be a perfect place to stay out of sight. Of course, I could never hope to explore such a labyrinth quickly or safely on my own, so I returned here. Even should we all join in the endeavor, an exhaustive search could take weeks, and with no guarantee of finding anything. The Wardens harbor vast reservoirs of primordial light, do they not? Far beyond anything found in lesser Sin Eaters. And isn't it true that the Oracle could see the light of a Sin Eater from miles away? Surely a Warden would seem like a blazing beacon by comparison! To the real Oracle of Light, I mean. The real Menphilia. If we travel to Armoreng, to the south where she halted the flood, I could summon her back. What do you think? Don't. Don't what? Do what I can. What we both know is right. Do not presume to know my mind. You have no idea what you're proposing. But I do! I know why you never said anything. Because you thought you could keep me safe by keeping me in the dark. 
And maybe I thought so too. But I knew, Thancred. I always knew. Oh, I see. I thought you were a rather underwhelming reincarnation. But it all makes sense now. The Oracle lies dormant within you, doesn't she? But to draw on her true power, you must become one, both body and soul. To wit, one being must consume the other. Who shall be the lucky winner? This doesn't concern you, Asian. But it plainly concerns you. Which is why your heart is ready to burst out of your chest. Despite the raging tempest in your bosom, however, you have never once opened up to your young charge. Now why would that be? Love. Well, I for one think it's a marvelous idea. Certainly more promising than any of your other suggestions. So, it's off to Armorang we go. I'll meet you at the gates. Take comfort in the bonds you share. Accept the pain when the time comes to part. Press on, for joy and sorrow walk hand in hand. Beyond Mount Garik lie the hills of amber, beneath which run hidden veins of mineral wealth. Or ran, at least. Mayhap they are spent. Or mayhap, the ringing of hammers can yet be heard below. Magnus's wife was a miner, you know. Greatest prospector there ever was. When the golem hearts started failing, she was the first to head out in search of more. Problem was, most of the veins ran dry ages ago, and finding fresh ones to tap's only gotten harder. But she wasn't one to be deterred. She just kept digging deeper and deeper. And then the mine collapsed. We labored day and night to clear away the rubble. But it took us two months to find her. To find her body. Magnus has never been the same since. Where is he, if you don't mind my asking? Ah, yes, well, if he's not here, there's only one other place he'd be. What? 
How many times must I tell you? The trolley won't run! We'd be better off dismantling the damn thing and selling the parts for scrap. Now piss off back to wherever you came from. And don't let me catch you around here again. What were their names? My son was named Skuli. My wife, Agna. Being here with them, it beats going home. Home stopped being home when I lost them. I thought to try and drown my sorrows, but Somehow, the bottle's never deep enough. No bottle is. Believe me, I know. You've lost someone too. Not like you. Not my own flesh and blood. I grew up an orphan, so I never really knew what family meant. Not until I met a man who offered to take me in and make me his pupil. He was a kindly soul, always looking out for me, like a father. Not that I appreciated that at the time, or anything else for that matter. But I finally had a family. And then... And then I robbed a young girl of hers. I did my best to make amends, to offer her comfort. But the more I look back on it, the more I realize just how inadequate my efforts were. I let her down. That is why I refuse to let her legacy die. In the end, all we can do is press on for those we have lost, for those we can yet save, And that requires your Talos. Please, Magnus. You are our only hope of reaching Nabath Arain. <laughs> what rubbish. She's not gone. No matter what you say or believe, she's not. We can still bring her back. You may not remember this about Arminphilia. But prior to founding the Path of the Twelve, long before the Scions, she was something of a miner. After her father died, Flamine took her in and taught her the trade. I think they were both seeking to fill the void left by a loved one. Maybe that's why she took to it so readily. Back in those days, I spent most of my time in the quicksand, or some other tavern, loosening tongues and gathering secrets. Occasionally, I'd catch a glimpse of her in the street, on her way home after another hard day's work. I always felt a wave of relief when I saw she'd come back safe. 
along with a pang of guilt at the fact I wasn't there to support her as I should have been. Simply speaking with her more than once in a blue moon would have been a good start, but I could never bring myself to do it. Instead, I threw myself into my work and became every drunkard's best friend. Not too highly, no. She once called me a wine-sodden wharf rat, which wouldn't have been half as galling had it not been so accurate. But that was a lifetime ago. Here and now I have another chance to do things right, and I will not squander it again. Hey, come and see what I found. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Tell me it's Leonine. It is at that. You lot were born lucky. It's mostly broken pieces. But look at this. This is a rather fine specimen. It's been decades since we found anything approaching this big. But that's not all. There's an engraving on it. Ah, these scratches here. They're a little hard to make out. To my beloved Magnus and Schooley. Yes! Do you see? It was a gift to Magnus from his wife. She found it. She really found it. She must have spent her final hours carving this message into the stone, in the hope that he might see it one day. Those rock-backed bastards must have made off with it before we could clear a path to her. It's fate that brought you here to find this stone. No other explanation. It makes me wonder what else might still be buried in these parts. Preparations for the enchantment are complete. When the heart hath been suffused with a sufficient quantity of ether, the golem should be restored to life. All right then. Whenever you're ready. It's working! It's working! Magnus! Wretched heap of stone and rubble!
this worthless pile of earth? And yet, I can't. I can't. What troubleth thee, child? I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be. I don't deserve any of the things you've done for me. I'm just a burden, helpless and hopeless. If tomorrow came and I was gone, it would be better for everyone. Thank Red most of all. He'll never admit it, but I can see it in his eyes. I wish he'd just say it. Just say that he hates me. That he wishes I was dead so that she could return. None of this is thy doing, child. Twas I who set the Oracle on her path unto the first. I who condemned you all to suffer these torments. Tis my sin alone and one that will haunt me unto my dying day. Yet I dare not dwell over long on my many regrets, for the world is a tapestry of fates, interwoven and inseparable. And we who strive to better it cannot choose but make difficult decisions. For naught of worth was ever achieved without sacrifice. And thus must man ever struggle to weigh life against loss. The one for whom thou mournest beareth no grudge. Were she here, she would not suffer thee to languish in sorrow. She would tell thee to seek thine own path, thine own purpose. It is a truth which I myself was slow to learn, yet a truth it remaineth. Thou needst but have faith, have faith, and all will be well. To what do I owe the pleasure that is your extended stay? Oh, to the tediousness of our hero's present endeavors. That and the insufferable abundance of light in Armoreng. I should be glad to keep my distance. Oh, I'm rather fond of sleep, you know. It's a wonderful way to pass the time. Not that my compeers would agree, mind you. Always on the move, the lot of them. Like La Hebrea, constantly jumping from vessel to vessel. Such fire, such determination. 
so much passion fleeting and forgotten. Come to think of it, Exarch, I don't believe I've ever seen you retire to your chambers for so much as 40 winks. However do you keep your eyes from closing? The cold shoulder. You wound me, sir. Always so guarded in our every interaction. Interactions you curiously refrain from sharing with the Scions and their champion. And risk souring your budding relationship? I think not. Much as I dislike you, there are more useful targets for her energies. And I am not in the habit of pointing her at my enemies like a weapon. Is that right? Fond of her, are you? You continue to fascinate me, Exarch. But tell me, who are you? The once great nation whose ingenuity gave birth to this tower was shaped by my hand. As such, I know full well the wonders it can facilitate and those it cannot. There is nothing in these walls which could have aided you in summoning our dear friend across time and space. Much less in possession of her mortal flesh, not even I could have performed such a feat. I see. You had a hand in Alag as well. You would know what I am? I am the adjudicator of the sacred history with which you dared trifle. I am keeper of this tower's boundless wisdom. The wisdom of ages without age, of everywhere and nowhere. The great work of those who tamed the wings of time and grasped the nature of the rift. Tis a boon born of the sacrifice of brave heroes who gave their lives for a brighter future. I will not see their hopes and dreams squandered. The history which led us here will be unwritten. I promise you that. Well, it seems we're both eager to fulfill our duties then. On that much, we are in agreement. 